Hi everybody. Well, it's hard to believe it's December 2024. Where has the year gone? I want to wish all of you, I know it's a bit early, but I want to wish you a happy and healthy new year 2025. Wow, that is a big number. Anyway, I have 10 cases to show you in our last quiz for the 2024 year. So with that, let's get started. The CT finding in the abdominal wall is best known as, which you can see there's a mass by the umbilicus. There's also a mass in muscle in the right lower quadrant. There also is carcinomatosis. Nicely shown on the cinematic rendering as well. This is classic for a sister, Mary Joseph Nodule. It was originally described as a finding to detect pancreatic adenocarcinoma. You can see it with other metastases. It's not an abscess. Yes, it's necrotic, but it's necrotic tumor, and it's not herniation of small bowel. Just a very classic finding. Sometimes the only site of spread will be to a sister of Mary Joseph Nodule. In this patient with right lower quadrant pain, the most likely diagnosis is, well, on the axial view and the coronal is a large soft tissue mass. The thing perhaps that helps you here is there's a small calcification. You could have worried about a sequel cancer that perforated perhaps, or even a tumor of the distal small bowel like lymphoma. Crohn's well, if you had a big abscess, I guess you can consider Crohn's, though I don't see any abnormal small bowel. But once you have the stone present, once you have that appendolith, this is a classic example of appendicitis with a large periappendiceal abscess. Just a really nice case. The most likely diagnosis in this 45-year-old female is large mass head of pancreas septations. Patient's 45 female. Could be a cirrhosis adenoma. It, should, it sort of looks like one. That's usually in the 60s, but still. IPMN is just too large. Um, septations, unless you said this patient had dysplastic nodules, but we usually don't see IPMNs this large, so I don't like that diagnosis. Spen tumors can be cystic, cystic and solid. Could be in 45-year-old females. It's a possibility. This ended up being a mucinocystic neoplasm. Again, large cystic lesion. This had tissue sampling and then was resected. Mucinocystic neoplasms, age 45 is perfect. Female is perfect. But you know, it's in the head of the pancreas and MCNs are usually body or body tail. And this is a pretty large one, but a really nice example of an MCN. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, there's an infiltrating tumor in the right adrenal, which extends around the kidney. You know, lymphoma is a good thought here, but there's enhancement in calcifications. It's not a ganglion neuroma, which is usually homogeneous and low density. It's not an adenoma, unless you said there was an adenoma that bled. This was a pheochromocytoma. Pheos are vascular, they're necrotic and cystic, and they can be infiltrating. They can present with spontaneous bleed. I think this is a tough case. If the patient was hypertensive, pheo would be a lot easier. But if you said lymphoma, I'll give you partial credit. That is a distinct possibility. In this patient with cough, the most likely diagnosis is what you can see is there's a mass in the trachea on the axial images, which narrows the lumen. And if you look down with virtual imaging, you can see is an intraluminal mass. Amyloid can give thickening and narrowing of the airway. Mets to the trachea can occur. It's very rare. This is not the density or location of a duplication cyst. When you think about intertracheal lesions, the number one thing that comes to your mind first is an adenoid cystic carcinoma, and that was the answer. Again, a MET would be a possibility. I once published an article about that, but the best diagnosis is adenoid cystic carcinoma. The most likely diagnosis in this 55-year-old female is we see a large cystic mass with septations and nodularity. You could argue is this coming from the adrenal, from the retroperitoneum, from the mesentery, but when you looked at all the images, it came from the pancreas. 
Serous cyst adenoma is a consideration based on age, the septations, but the solid components at 3 o'clock would be unusual. This does not have the look of an IPMN. It's too large. It could be a spend tumor only because it seems to me that spend tumors can look like anything, but they're very rare. The most likely diagnosis based on the septations, which I love, as well as the solid component, is a mucinous cystic neoplasm. And the solid component means the patient has high-grade dysplasia or carcinoma. At surgery, this was a MCN with high-grade dysplasia. The most likely diagnosis in this 50-year-old female is... Now, this is a case I'm showing you at the end of the year, so I'm going to be difficult with this case. There's a mass net of the pancreas that's well-defined. It's solid, but not very vascular. There's some cystic component. It doesn't look like a serous cystadenoma. It's not an MCN either. It could be a spend tumor, though the patient is old. Spends can be solid with a little bit of cystic change. I show this case because every once in a while, we have these incredible cases and this is one of them. This was a schwannoma. We've seen several small or larger schwannomas in the pancreatic head. It's an unusual diagnosis. To be honest, can you make the diagnosis? Not even at conference can you make the diagnosis. At conference, you could bring it up as a possibility. But in real life, you're going to say this is a solid mass. It's a neoplasm. Let's biopsy it. Spen would not have been a bad choice. In this 50-year-old male with chest pain, the best diagnosis is when you look at the LAD, and you can see this nicely on the axial as well as on the 3D cinematic rendering, there's a roughly 15-millimeter aneurysm arising from the LAD. It's not plaque. We're not seeing an aberrant origin. We're not seeing pulmonary embolism. The fact is, you're not even seeing the RCA here, and you're not even looking at the pulmonary arteries for the most part. This is a beautiful example of an aneurysm of the left anterior descending coronary artery. The most common location for aneurysms is the right coronary, but the left coronary gets its share, and this is a nice example. In this patient with small bowel GI bleed, what's the best diagnosis? Well, when you look carefully, it's really hard, but you do see a mass right in the center of the axial image, which is better shown on the coronal. The lesion, which measures a bit over a centimeter, is vascular, and it looks like it's exophytic. It's not angiodysplasia, which are multiple small vascular lesions. It's not adenocarcinoma in all likelihood because it's too well defined. I can't argue about metastatic melanoma. Melanoma has many appearances, and small bowel mets are not uncommon. So that would be a possibility. But in a patient without a known primary, we are having GI bleeding and presentation. Differential with focus on carcinoid versus just tumor. Carcinoid may have desmoplastic reaction with it, but sometimes it looks identical to a just tumor. The main finding with just it's more exophytic than a carcinoid, and sometimes that can be helpful. The most likely diagnosis in this incidental pancreatic mass is, well, you see a mass in the tail of the pancreas, which is cystic and well-defined. You could consider a serous cyst adenoma, an IPMN, even a pseudocyst. But when you look at the volume rendering in the coronal view, you realize this lesion almost simply abuts the pancreas, also sort of abuts the stomach. It's well-defined. There's no dilated pancreatic duct. There's maybe a tiny septation. Lesions which appear to come off the pancreas, you got to think about lymphoepithelial cysts. Those are benign lesions. CT often can be very suggestive. Commonly, it's never considered. And again, this case shows nicely that the multiplanar or 3D make you consider that possibility, while in the axial views you may not have. So the answer is a lymphoepithelial cyst. Well, that's the end of the December 2024 quiz. I hope you enjoyed the cases. Again, Happy New Year, Happy and Healthy 2025, and I hope 2024 was a great year for all of us. And with that, have a great day, everybody.
If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.